Hi guys, we're going to go ahead and start Unit 5 on Probability. And so we'll start with some basic introductory probability and uh, go through those. And so let's just start and do it. Here we go. Uh, first, we want to talk about um, finding probabilities of, of events that are disjoint and indep or independent. Okay, And so we'll talk about what that actually means by definition here in a minute. Okay, So <clears throat> let's just take, if, say, we took a sample, because we're not going to obviously do that, of our students in the class. And we asked the, a random sample. So I numbered, I did a random number generator of the desks. And then I asked those people, uh, I just, you know, determined if they were male or female, and then what their eye color was. So what we want to do is talk about what are all the possible options that we could have. So if we were just going to classify them, and we don't have hazel in here, as blue, brown, or green and then male or female. So what we can see then is that here are all the possible outcomes that could happen. We could have male and blue eyes, male and brown eyes, male and green eyes, and then the same things for the females. So that's the set of all possible outcomes that could happen. And the set of all those possible outcomes is called that sample set. Okay, so if we say, okay, how, you know, how many or what's in the sample set, then you're going to just list out all of the possibilities that could happen based on the question that you were given. All right, so suppose that we did that and we collected data of the 10 students in our randomly selected 10 students in our class. And we got some numbers. Now we don't actually have to have those numbers to be able to continue, so we'll just go on from there. All right, so the first question is asking us, and so I want to actually look at this without um, revealing the answers immediately. So our first question is asking, um, what's the probability that we have a male or a female? Okay, so if I randomly ex um, selected somebody from those 10 people, what's the probability that that person is a male or a female? Okay, well, hopefully uh, you can see that we're going to go with the standard um, gender one or the other, and so we would see that 100% of the students that I would choose from are a male or a female. Okay, and same thing with this. What proportion of them have blue or brown or green eyes. And so hopefully you would see that they all have, we all classified them as one of those colors of eyes, so that's 100%. So these ones, when we talk about the different categories, the ors kind of added all of them together, and when we added them all together, that represented 100%. Now, let's talk about this overlap. What proportion or what's the probability that I would get somebody that is male and female. So, you know, even just based on the way this is organized, based on the way this is organized, you cannot have a person that is classified in both of those categories. So then hopefully you can see then, of course, that that would be zero. And the same thing, unless there is this thing where you could have two different colored eyes, but very rare. Um, what's the probability that you have blue, brown, and green eyes? <laughs> well, you can't have probably three colored eyes, even if you had two different colored eyes. So, of course, that is zero. So, these events, such as, events such as the, these, have a specific name. And so let's take a look at that. So what we see here, you know, here are those numbers that I put in. So male or female, those would be two different circles because there was no overlap in between them. And same thing with the blue, the brown, and the green. Two um, separate, not joined together circles. So what we say is that those events are disjoint. They are not joint like a Venn diagram looks like when there's that overlap. They are disjoint, 
no outcomes in common. So that's that definition, disjoint, no outcomes in common. Now, another name is mutually exclusive. Okay, so you may be exposed to that, I think, in AP statistics. I don't know which vocabulary word that they use, because honestly, um, I think they do both of them. I've seen them interchanged, okay? So we should consider that. That disjoint or mutually exclusive means no outcomes in common. That's why over here, when we said male or females, then they have no out overlap. There was no overlap between them. So when we added them together, we get a total of 100%. Okay. Next, uh, there's a song. <laughs> And uh, to help you remember that definition of the disjoint, and I'll just attach it on the page. I won't necessarily play it, but what it kind of is saying is, you know, there are things up in there are things up in the clouds, and there are things down on the ground. Oh, 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 and the things up in the sky can't touch the ground at the same time. Uh, 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 if you're completely in the sky, you can't touch the ground at the same time. They'll never intersect, no. Oh, they'll never intersect, no. Oh, exclusive, mutually. So that's mutually exclusive. Oh, oh, disjoint can't happen at the same time. They're not joined together. They're not joint probability. Oh, oh, Disjoint can't happen at the same time. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so there's yourself a little um, song about disjoint. Okay, moving on. So here are some things that we have already talked about. One thing, you know, that we might kind of just, let's go down here and look at some of these qualities of the disjoint events. The two, we know this, two events have no outcomes in common. They cannot occur at the same time. The probability of A and B happening at the same time is zero. Okay, and if they are disjoint, then A or B, which we saw that is probability of A or B. And you know what? Remember, we said that if that's everything, then that equals one. Okay, um, if it's not everything, then you just have uh, those two parts. All right. If the events are not disjoint, then we will address that uh, later in this chapter. Um, we'll first take a quiz over this first basic probability, and then we'll get into the more uh, difficult or more thought-provoking problems when ones are not disjoint. All right. We know independent, 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 when the fact that you are one thing does not change the rate. So the fact that A has occurred does not change the probability that event B will occur. Flipping a coins. What you get on the first flip of the coin has no bearing on what you're going to get on the second flip of the coin. And then see those not independent ones we'll get to later. Uh, said chapter 15. Uh, it's later in unit 5. Okay. Complements. So that's this word, complement. We uh, say that that is like the other part to the whole. So if you want to know the complement to probability A, then you do 1 minus probability of A. Okay, so if, um, you know, 90% of Miss McClellan's students love statistics, then what proportion do not love statistics? Well, that's 1 minus that 90%. So that would be 10%, the complement. Okay, moving on. So now let's just kind of throw in some probabilities here. All right, let's take a look at it. So a uh, word of warning, though. They're in this probability, the whole entire unit, till the end of this semester. Um, there is just so, so many different ways that these types of problems can be worded. That, and there's just such subtle differences in the way they are worded. You have to practice it. No ifs, ands, or buts. So if you've kind of gotten into this habit where you have um, kind of just been sloughing and kind of doing the bare minimum, 
That's going to really kick you in the rear here in this crunch time before the end of the semester. Okay, so you have got to make that commitment right now that you're going to get in there and you're going to practice every single one of these problems. Okay, here we go. So the probability of independent events, that's what we're talking about today, is the probability of this and that. This and that, those two probabilities will multiply together. So the probability of getting two heads in a row is the probability of getting heads and the second one's a heads, so that's half times half. So that's how you get your one-fourth. And so I'll just come on over here and do that. And it looks like that. See, this and is your multiplication. Next, what's the probability of scoring a total of 18 when three fair die are rolled? Okay, well, how can you get a um, sum of 18 from three die? The only way to get that sum of 18 is if all three die are a six. So I need the first one to be a six and the second one to be a six and the third one to be a six. See, this one's a six, one six. And this one's a sixth, one sixth. And this one's a six, one sixth, okay? And answers can be in fraction or decimal or even, or percent. All those are totally interchangeable, no difference whatsoever. All right, oh, this is interesting. What happens if, or what is the probability that you roll a die and you do not get a three. So a three is what we're shooting for, but we do not get one until the fifth roll. So that means the first four are not a three. And so what's the probability of not being a three? And hopefully you can see that that is five sixths. So here we have not a three and not a three and not a three and not a three, and, and then the fifth one, the fifth event is a three. So that probability was one sixth. And there's how that multiplies out. All right, next. Okay, there are five multiple choice questions and each have four possible answer choices on this history quiz. So, if you randomly guess, if you just guess, you had no idea what it was, and I just, uh, you know, I, I said, number your paper to one from one to five and put down an answer for numbers or all those problems, put down an A, B, C, or D. Well, what's the probability that you get it correct? One fourth. So for problem one, there's a fourth of a chance you get it correct. And problem two, there's a fourth of a chance you got it correct if you're just randomly guessing. And then we have five events occurring. So we would have five numbers. So let's see our probability. You get none of those questions correct. All five are wrong. Well, if a fourth is correct, three-fourths is the probability of wrong. So here we go. Wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. five of them are wrong. Now, of course, you can write this as three-fourths to the fifth power, okay? I, t I am at first kind of writing everything out so you can see what happens, but as we go through this unit, then I'll do that less and less and just jump to the shortcut way of writing it. But at first, I go ahead and show you how I came up with those amounts. Okay, you get a 100. Woo, that means you guessed all five questions correct. Holy moly, you were a good guesser. So that means one fourth, see I didn't write this out, to the fifth power. So whoa, look at that, random guessing, 0 .00098. So let me just tell you something. If you randomly guessed and you got 100, I'm going to be highly suspicious that something happened and it wasn't just randomness because, oh man, 0 0.098, not even a tenth of 1%. Wow. Okay. So you should be suspicious if somebody does that well on random guessing. The first incorrect answer is the fourth question. This is interesting. 
because this problem's out of five questions. So, the, so then that begs the thought, okay, what happens on the fifth one? So it's the order is being laid out. They're telling me what has, ha has to happen through the fourth question. So you get the first incorrect one. So correct, 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 incorrect. And then what happens on the fifth one? Well, here we go. Look, correct and correct. And the third one's correct. And the fourth one's correct. And the last one can be whatever you want. So it can be any of the four choices out of the four possibilities. So you always know that these whatevers are just a one. Okay. Um, I just was demonstrating with the same denominator. Not, it doesn't matter. I could have put a billion over a billion, but that's what's happening when they don't tell you uh, some specifics of what that last question needs to be. Then that's not an indicator or at all in there, really, at all. Okay. All right. Now we're going to see what happens if we have the or. So <clears throat> we saw and was the multiplication problems, and we're going to see or is when you are going to be adding them together. So see a jack or a queen. So you need to make sure that you know the deck of what's in a deck of cards. And I don't have that shown right here. Um, but I will go ahead and put a file of what's in a deck of cards so you can see what's in there. I really do need to pull that up, and I don't think I can quickly enough to uh, make it worth, worth it. So I'm just going to go as if you understand um, that there are, half the deck is red, half the deck is black. There's four suits, diamonds, hearts, clubs, and um, spades, okay? And then we want to, uh, and then each suit goes from two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king, and ace. All right. So here we go. What's the probability that you pick a card and it's a jack or a queen? Well, there's four jacks and four queens. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> four. Oh, that is wrong. Oh, no, that's right. That's right. Yeah. These four jacks, that is a ace, I mean, a um, diamond jack, club jack, hearts jack, spade jack. So there are four suits. So there were four jacks in the mix. Okay. Just like there were four queens out of 52. So eight out of 52. See, they added. Okay. So here we have this where it is neither a face card, so not a jack, queen, or king. So how many jack, queens, and kings are there? Twelve, because there's four of each. And then nor is it an ace. So it's not a jack, queen, king, or ace. There's four of each, so that's 16. And we do not want it to be one of those 16. So it is not any of those. So I subtracted away that 16, and that's how I get that 36 out of there. All right, there's that. Now I think we start putting that all together, and we start seeing problems where you might have to add and do multiplication kind of in the same problem. So let's see how we do. In fact, you might uh, stop the video right now and then see how, and then try it yourself, and then come back and see how you do. Um, definitely with probability, that's something that will help you have that security of reading it, trying it, and then immediately checking and seeing if that's what, if what you thought was the way to do it is what was right. Okay, so here we go. What's the probability that you roll a die three times? Okay, so I'm going to have the first roll and the second roll and the third roll. So I'll have three multiplication numbers. And you do not get a one or a six until the third roll. So that means, so I wrote down here what that means. Look, this first is not a one or a six. And the second one is not a one or a six. And the third one is a one or a six. So out of the fair die, four sixths, you know, all the other numbers. Okay, four sixths and two sixths. 
All right, let's see how we do it on this one. Same kind of idea. Let's probably build your row five times. And the first time that you get a one or a six is the third row. Okay, first time you get a one or a six is the third row. Oh, notice. Notice here I said you roll the die three times. Here I'm saying you roll the die five times. And the first time you get a one or a six is the third roll. So look at the beginning of these. They're both not a one or a six and not a one or a six. And ding, 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 this one's a one or a six. But this one said you roll it five times. So sure, whatever. It doesn't matter what are on the, on the fourth or the fifth roll. They don't care. They don't specify. So it doesn't matter. You just get a roll, six out of six. And so notice that, see, there's infinite number of ways. I mean, there's so many ways that you could say the same idea in different wordings. That's why you have got to practice, practice, practice. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's see. When you roll the die five times, what's the probability that the first time you get a six is on the third roll or... So you have two complete events happening. The first time you get one is the, the third roll, or that's plus. The first time you get one is on the fourth roll. <clears throat> so we have two different problems here. The first time getting it on the third row, or that's adding the first time you get it on the fourth roll. So that looks like this. It's a lot. So here is not a six, not a six. Third roll is a six. Or this whole event happens. Not a six, not a six, not a six. And the fourth time you get it, it's a six. <clears throat> so you have those complete sections together. All right. And here we go. The last idea. How to handle at least one. In fact, let me think, I may just go ahead at this point, stop for a moment, let you kind of process some of those things that have gone through there. Maybe look back or stop and go back and see what you do. And then I'm going to do a separate small video of the probability of at least one. Because I think that topic might be something that some students may want to come back once, even especially after we have our fall break and come back and revisit. So, I'll go ahead and stop that and make the next video for this um, kind of tricky thing and the way I can show you a shortcut of the probability of at least one.